I've been working with some old uh, electronic communication lab experiments. Uh, old because they go back uh, 15 or more years. Uh, and the reason that I'm resurrecting the past is I'm actually trying to see how the analog discovery might be used to replace some of the old equipment. Uh, these are some pieces of equipment that were designed a long time ago. Uh, I'll talk a little more about those in a minute. But they really were, were built as uh, prototypes for, uh, for laboratory experiments. And the experiments themselves come out of a lab manual. Uh, this is the one lab manual f uh, to accompany uh, modern electronic communication by Beasley and, and Miller. But the particular experiment that I'm working on is this one, pulse amplitude modulation, which is a rather simple introductory experiment. It's usually the first experiment that uh, electronic communications uh, engineering students uh, do in the lab. It's not a really useful circuit, but it is useful as a as a starting point, which we we'll, may talk about a little later. And the whole point of this experiment is to demonstrate how you can use a pulse to amplitude modulate a, uh, a signal. But you can use a simple filter to recover amplitude modulated signals particularly in this case since the uh, the amplitude modulation is asymmetric as we'll see in just a second. And so at one point I designed some of these prototypes that are uh, uh, this particular one over here is the 8038 that you see there in the lower left hand corner along with some additional controls, one to control frequency, one to control the uh, duty cycle, and one to switch the range so you could get multiple ranges. Also an 8038 will put out three different uh, signals. Uh, this is only using the square wave, but there also is a sine wave and a triangle wave available simultaneously. Now of course they all are at the same frequency, so we'll talk about that a little later too. So the whole point, though, uh, is to now see whether we can use the analog discovery to replace this other equipment over here. But to give you an idea of how the old experiment worked, uh, up here is the uh, waveform. At the top is the input. And at the bottom is the pulse amplitude modulated signal. So the top signal is 300 hertz. At the bottom you have the uh, 12 kilohertz AM modulation. And now I'm going to move a jumper. I'll show you on the board. I'm going to move this jumper from the 10K resistor that you see right there. And I'm going to move it over to this uh, combination of a capacitor and a resistor which forms a, uh, a low-pass filter. And the uh, idea is that when I do that, uh, that will filter the pulse amplitude modulation and recover the original signal. So I'll be moving this from here to here, but so you can see what happens, I'm going to be actually showing you the screen. So that's the way the original experiment worked. Uh, and as I say, it's not a real useful circuit, but it does serve as a, uh, an introduction that you then build on using various other techniques, time division, multiplexing, and uh, quadrature multiplexing, and so on, that are a little more modern. So at this point, I'm going to break off because I'm going to set up and see if I can now replace with the analog discovery this equipment over here, which proves to be a little bit cumbersome, particularly you have to build a half a dozen to a dozen copies so you can have that many stations uh, in a lab. I've connected the analog discovery to the same circuit, that is the 4066 bilateral switch. You can probably see here is the 
square wave that's the switch, and then down here is the sine wave. The square wave is at uh, 20 kilohertz, and I had to set the sine wave to 500 hertz instead of 300 hertz. So anyway, that is the, uh, the setup. Same as before with uh, slightly different frequencies. Up here you see the, uh, the oscilloscope, and at the top is the, uh, is the pulse amplitude modulation. At the bottom is the signal, the 500 hertz signal. Uh, and now you see the uh, results of moving the output over here on the schematic the output of uh, the bilateral switch. The waveform you saw a minute ago was when it was just connected through a 10K to ground. That's the, the, the PAM signal without any kind of filtering. And now we have TP3 connected to the output, which is basically a low-pass filter. We've replaced all that uh, equipment with the analog discovery. The next thing I'd like to do is, because the analog discovery also has an oscilloscope function, is I'd like to replace the uh, oscilloscope up there. Now we've connected the oscilloscope portion of the analog discovery in place of the uh, Tektronics. So, and here you see is the waveform. Once again at the top, this is the pulse amplitude modulation. The one at the bottom is the uh, is the signal input. That is the uh, what you would call the information channel. Uh, now I'm going to pause one last time and switch over to change the filter. It's right now got the 10k on the output. I'm going to insert the 1k with the 0.01 microfarad uh, low pass filter. And now I've made that change. The uh, scope is now connected to the junction between the uh, capacitor and the resistor. And the output of the PAM circuit, or the bilateral switch, is at the top of the resistor, as shown in the schematic there. We have successfully recovered the information signal using a low-pass filter. Now, this particular circuit, that is a simple bilateral switch, 4066, is a rather simple circuit and wouldn't be used in any practical application. There are lots better ways to accomplish this. It's really more a confidence builder for uh, students in uh, what is often their first electronic communication lab. and. So the purpose is more to get them used to building circuits and testing them than it is to illustrate any special uh, techniques. But we will then build on that in subsequent labs to, uh, to make things a little more complicated. But that's enough for this one, and I'm going to wrap up this video at this point. It is, uh, I think, a successful demonstration that the analog discovery can... Uh, successfully be inserted in place of the uh, equipment that uh, was actually designed some years ago and hopefully that'll make things not only easier but uh, a little more affordable for the uh, for the labs and perhaps even the students can get their own analog discovery and do their lab experiments back in the dorm or something. At any rate I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I do intend to do some more, but for right now, this is the uh, really the proof of concept that the analog discovery is a viable tool for uh, uh, doing these kinds of electronic communication experiments.